Hello and welcome to this example video about electromagnetic induction with a focus on the moving conductors. All right. So before we begin, uh, I would also just like to refresh our memory about what is Faraday and Lenz law, specifically Faraday's law. All right. So moving conductor examples is that we use the moving conductor to change the magnetic flux. All right. So if you want, I guess you could put the word linkage. Symbol here is psi. If your conductor is a coil or it could be magnetic flux. All right. So we do not emphasize uh, too much on this symbol as long as you know what you're talking about. All right. So a reminder that flux is equal to NBA. All right. For more uh, the in-depth discussion, Check out the theory video. So changes in magnetic flux linkage, according to Faraday, our good friend Faraday, which is the main star of the topic, it says that it will induce EMF. You have to use the term induce EMF, not create EMF, not have EMF, not produce EMF, but induce EMF because it's a scientific term. And also because the way you can induce it is by changing the magnetic flux. So we move conductors to change magnetic flux. Mainly, if you're wondering what we're changing, we're either changing the area of the coil inside the magnetic field, or we are changing the magnetic field strength by adjusting the area. So by adjusting the proximity of the magnet. So you change this by moving the magnet. It can be an electromagnet, it can be a magnet bar. So let's say we move the electromagnet, or in this case, we could be moving a coil or a straight conductor, like a rail gun. All right, so just to have this idea where there are so many ways to change your flux, and this one we're going to talk about wires or frames or coils that is moving. All right, moving on. So let's look at this example. This example is from uh, Winter 10, Paper 43. Here we have a horseshoe magnet and the dimensions are given, 5 and 2.4. And we're going to pull the horseshoe magnet, I mean, pull the copper wire upwards. The uniform flux density, magnetic flux density between the poles of the magnet is 89 millitesla. So this value is B. Outside of the region of the poles, the magnetic flux density is zero. So just to make our lives a bit easier, I'm going to shade the place or the 3D space where the magnetic flux density occupies. Okay, so you can see I've shaded blue this area. And we're going to move the wire upwards to cut the flux. Or oh, in other words, right, when the wire is at the bottom position, let's say when the wire is uh, at this position here, So this is the initial position and this is the final position because the wire is moving up. So if you imagine, right, initially uh, you have this area of flux inside the closed loop. Where is the closed loop? I miss nah, the closed loop here. No? Doo -doo -doo. This is the closed loop, including the wire. So when we first started this, um, the wire would be at the bottom of the magnet here. And it, all of this uh, blue color magnetic flux will be inside. And then you pull it up. So basically you have, you have flux and then you have no flux. So there's a change in flux. Uh, which is why it means by outside the region of poles, the magnetic flux density is zero. A stiff copper wire is connected to a sensitive ammeter of resistance uh, 0 0.12 ohm. Not quite sure why we need the value of R, but I'll just highlight this here in case we're going to use it. A student moves the wire at a constant speed of 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 1 meter per second between the poles in the direction parallel to the faces of the pole. Okay, so it's going to move at this velocity. So normally, this kind of question from chapter 23, they will always start by either asking you to state Faraday's law, which you didn't, or to calculate the magnetic flux between the poles of the magnet. 
So we don't use the, the term magnetic linkage because there's no coils here. There's just one loop. So in this case, the magnetic flux. Recall that magnetic flux here will be equal to B A. So we have the value of B, 89 times 10 to the power of negative 3 millitesla here. And the area would be this area. Okay, so the flux uh, passes through this surface area. I'm just going to shade it for you, this area. Okay, this is the area in question. So we will take 5 cm multiplied by 24 cm. I put it inside. 5 times, not 24, sorry, 2.4. Don't forget to convert to meter. So this will be negative 4. Why does it need to be in meter square? Because of this Weber. So you must make sure that everything else inside this equation here is SI. So if you were to take out your calculator and press, you will get 1.07 times 10 to the power of negative 4. You could write 1.1, so you can be 2 to 3 SF. All right, so this is the amount of flux that we have when the wire is at the initial position as well. Not just in between the poles of the magnet, but when the wire is at the bottom position. Because at the bottom position, you can see my the closed loop is here. There's one connector here, I cannot see that. All right, so it says here, determine for the wire moving in between the poles of the magnet, the EMF induced in the wire. So whenever we are looking for EMF induced, we will use Faraday's law where we say the induced EMF E is equal to D flux DT. Of course, if you are stating Faraday's law, this equal sign should be proportional. Huh? This equal sign has to be proportional if you are stating Faraday's law, but we are using it to calculate now. So in the theory video, we have explained how we dealt with the proportionality sign. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the change in flux. So the flux went from 1.07 times 10 to the power of negative 4 to 0 when it's completely outside of, when the wire is completely outside of the magnet. So at the initial position here, your flux was your 1.07 times 10 to the power of negative 4. At the final position, your flux becomes 0. Okay, so minus 0. Lo. But miss, how long did it take for the wire to go up? Ah? Well, good news here is, although we don't have time, we have the number for or the value for velocity. Right? So I'm just going to write it up here that V is equal to 1.8 meter per second and this v is constant so if our velocity is constant and we know that the wire is traveling upwards so i will take this as the distance traveled because constant velocity we can take distance over time so let's say i take x over t so this one is equal to my x is 1.8 so to find t it will be 1.8 divided by x which is 2.4 don't forget to convert to meter. All right, so this is how you can find the time taken. I guess what I can do is I can just substitute uh, because less one calculator to press. So I'll write, I'll copy this down there. Okay, so we have a value of t that I can now substitute inside here. Um, divide by 1.8, divided by 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative 2. You could leave it here or I'll just bring up here and multiply. Uh. Because, like I said, pressing calculator less is better for me. But of course, if you want to, you can find the value of t here. Alright, no harm done. So from here, you will get 8.03 times 10 to the power of negative 3 volt. Alright, try it out, press your calculator and see. Um, and the reason why I don't keep it in millivolt is because this answer is V. Alright, so 8.03 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Okay, so nice and easy. Whenever you are used, you are asked to use Faraday's law, always take the change in flux, this one. Always consider 
what is moving and what is the change in flux. So this is just the magnitude. We haven't uh, talked about direction yet. So if you don't include a negative sign, that's okay. Because we need to use certain hand rules to consider the direction. But we definitely know that this is the magnitude here. Whether it's flowing clockwise or anticlockwise in the loop. You didn't ask, ma, so you don't have to bother yourself first. Identify the change in flux, which is uh, this 1.7 to 0. And then divide by the time taken. So when you divide by this dt, this time taken, make sure that you know how to find dt. Lah. Sometimes it will be, oh, we give you velocity and you find the t. All right, so there is this part. We're going to move on to the next one. Okay, so in this next part, you are asked to show that the ammeter reading is around approximately 70 milliampere. Oh, that was why they gave us the resistance, because V is equal to IR. And we already have the EMF and the value of R, so let us go and hunt it down. The value of R is 0 0.12, and the EMF is 8.03 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So I'll put that in here. This is 8.03 millivolt, looking for I, and the resistance is 0 0.12. So from here, you can press your calculator, and your I will look something like 67 milliampere, okay? Or I guess if you want to, 0 0.067 ampere. Okay, so if you move it back, this is 67 milliampere, which is approximately 70 milliampere. Okay, so what they're looking for is just this calculation, uh, your ability to use V equal to IR, arriving at the answer. Okay, part C. By reference to Lenz law, okay, so we're going to bring out Lenz now. A force acts on the wire to oppose the motion of the wire. The student who moved the wire between the poles of the magnet claims to not have felt this force. Explain quantitatively a reason for this claim. So whenever you see the word quantitative, we are talking about numbers. So you have to calculate. If you don't calculate, then how? You don't know your numbers. Lo. All right. So we're going to calculate, but you here you might be a bit stuck. Hamis, they got teach us how to calculate the force man. All this while is induced EMF only, ma. Where got force calculation? Ah, my friends, here is where I want to tell you something. When there's current flowing inside of this thing, you don't know the direction of the current, right? So right now, in order for us to brain or consider this, I'm going to recrop the diagram and assign a polarity for the magnet for us to determine the direction of the current and see what happens. So... For this case, I will copy the diagram again. You hang on for a bit. Okay, so you can see now a fresh new diagram. Uh, again, normally if this is an interactive class, I will ask you to tell me which direction of magnetic flux you want it to be. But since it is not, I shall just go north and south. All right, it does not matter. The same thing will apply. So let's say the flux is pointing this way. And uh, just to make my life a bit easier, I'm just going to draw one arrow now, okay? This is the direction of B. It is also the direction of magnetic. Wait, it's not the direction of magnetic flux. Just the direction of B. Magnetic flux is a scalar. All right. So this is the direction of B. Now, if let's say this is the direction of B, and you are pulling the wire this way, let's uh, let's pretend that you are at the wire, or let's stare at the wire a bit. When the wire was at this bottom position, let's say here. And let's say this is the loop, la, okay? The magnetic field inside it is pointing into the plane. So once again, this is when I put my eye here and stare at the wire. When you reach this part here, say so again, this is the loop, there is, the, there is no, no magnetic flux here, B equal to zero. So when you remove the flux that, were, that was once there, the... Close loop be like, hey, excuse me, I had this magnetic field. I had this beautiful inward magnetic field. Why do you take away my flux, says the coil. So according to Lenz law, the coil will now oppose this change. The coil be like, no, I want back my flux, so I'm going to make my own current to create, to recreate this flux. So now our objective is, so I'm going to write here, objective 
purpose mission statement to replace the missing inward flux. During exam, please don't write the conductor in the closed loop has a mission objective to replace the missing magnetic flux, okay? Because that is not, that's not really how they say it. Well, the way you would say it is current is induced. I'll write here for you. So what you should say is current is induced in the closed loop or the copper wire to oppose the change in flux. This is what we want. But if you want to think about it the way I've mentioned it, that is also okay. So let's take out our hand. All right. We want to produce this cross magnetic field. This cross magnetic field, we want to produce this one. So where should the current flow? Your thumb should point away from the screen. So away from the screen? No, your thumb should point towards the screen. Because the magnetic flux is going inward. So your thumb must point inside. Point inside and where is my hand curling? My hand looks so big now. Point inside and my hand is curling clockwise. So if my hand is curling clockwise, this means that the current will go like this. I draw for you. Lah. Current flow like this. So that I can make this feel. Okay, so this one here, I'm just going to draw dot, 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 dot. And this I. Both of this. This and this are induced due to change in flux. Okay, so let's go back to here. So now we know the current will momentarily flow in this direction. I have current. Current in magnetic field. 90 degrees some more, guys. This is so familiar. Current in magnetic field and 90 degree. So because of this, right, there is I in a conductor placed 90 degree to B. Wow. What is the outcome from chapter 22 or from your studies of magnetic field? Your magnetic force X on the wire. Time to take out left hand. All right. So now take out your left hand. So your B will have to go inward. F, thumb is F. Index finger is B. Middle finger is I. So your B will go inward. All right. And where is your current? Current is flowing to the left. So I will turn my hand and you will notice where is my thumb? Finger you must do it together with me. Index finger pointing towards the screen. Middle finger follow the direction of current flow. Thumb is going down. This means the magnetic force on the wire is pointing downwards. This FB is downwards. So this is the force. that opposes the change in flux. So in a roundabout way, we have more or less come full circle. When we change the flux, whenever you have a closed conductor, it does not want its flux to be changed. So it will fight it. It will fight it in every single way. It will fight it in a way of current will flow and creating an opposing field or a field to oppose the decrease in this case because you are replacing the missing flux, this one. It will oppose it in such a way where it will create, all of this happen at the same time, uh, okay? It will create a force, a magnetic force, that pulls downwards, opposing this initial upward motion. You see here, there's an initial upward motion. So we are opposing this initial upward motion. motion. Number three, there's also a loss in energy, i.e. 
whichever external force that is pulling the wire upward will have to do work. So this F external, if you want to maintain constant speed, which is this question, put here, to maintain constant V, you need an external force, which will be the same as the magnetic force. All right. So you pull up. If not, then it will slow down, which is a lot like your eddy current. You induce current to oppose the change, the motion will slow down because you are converting kinetic energy to heat or to electrical energy and to heat. So this external force is does work and then that work done is converted to electrical energy. So whenever you want to change flux, three things will happen at the same time. You will induce EMF and in that induced EMF, you will try to oppose that change in flux. Number two, because you induce EMF, you will experience a force. Because there's an induced EMF inside this loop, the loop will experience a force to oppose whichever motion that you are making. All right, so this is to oppose. And you can use your Fleming's left hand to confirm this one. So I'll write here in case you came back and you're like, how? I use Fleming's left hand. Okay, and finally, if you want to think about conservation of energy, we want this copper wire to maintain the same speed. This whole question, the copper wire maintain the same speed. So this external force upward must be the same as the downward magnetic force. So this external force is the work done against the, <laughs> the magnetic field such that electrical energy is generated. If not, then where, where, where you get the electrical energy from? Where you get the 8 millivolt from? Thank goodness the energy is small. Okay, so I'm going to label all of this for you. First consideration, we use lens. Second consideration, we talk about the direction of force to oppose the change. And third consideration is an energy consideration. Okay? So, miss, do I need to write that much? Huh? I no need. Lah. We, you are asked to use the second consideration. So by Lenz law, all three will happen at the same time. Oppose the change, got force, energy loss. All at the same time. Okay? But now you are asked to focus on force. Okay, no? So this force is the magnetic force. Okay, so I'll just make a note here. This magnetic force exists to oppose the change in flux. But it may not be the case, may not just be the case. It also exists because I mean, may not just be the case. I mean, you can always say magnetic force exists to oppose a change in flux. That's a little bit simplistic. You can also remember that this is further supported by Fleming's left hand. You now have induced current inside a magnetic field. Some more 90 degree. So this FB will be equal to BIL. Of course, you want you can put sine theta, but it's 90 degree. So now we have to calculate lo. B I L sine theta. What is our magnetic flux density? Or oh, B got here 89 times 10 to the power of negative 3. What was our current again? 70 milliampere times 10 to the power of negative 3. This looks very short. I mean very small. Yes, my friend. Uh, L. Miss, what is the length? They never give us the length of the copper wire also. My friends, do you need the length of the copper wire? No need, right? The actual length is the length of the copper wire that is inside the field. So the actual length that we're talking about, or the length in question, is just here to here. This is your L, which is the same as this one. Okay, because this is a length... This is the length of the wire inside the field. So this is 5 cm. 5 times 10 to the power of negative 2. 
And if we press our calculator, you see all these uh, prefix are uh, very small. Eh? Huh? So we press our calculator and in the end of the day, we will get 3 times 10 to the power of negative 4 Newton. Okay, so just for you, in case you are like, confused which length to use, this is length of wire in the magnetic field or magnetic flux. Okay, I think this is very small. How small is this, uh, Miss? You multiply by 10, oh, this is 3 milligram. It's lighter than your hair, or around the weight of your hair. We good, okay? So from here, what we can say is that this value of a magnitude of Fb is too small to be felt by the student, all right? So where is the three marks? Uh, conclusion is one mark. You say that the magnitude of Fb is too small. Okay. You calculate is one mark. Bil is one mark. Like you have the idea that, oh, this force is actually the magnetic force. That would be one mark. Okay. Um, I haven't stated the mark scheme here for you. So if you're interested, this kind is very, very straightforward. Final answer is one mark. And then if you substitute correctly, including unit conversion is one mark. This one, knowing how to find the time is definitely one mark. Finding the correct flux change here to here is one mark. The flux change only. You've measured the wrong time, never mind. And the final answer is one mark. Okay, so this can be uh, quite a tricky question if you don't know your concepts. So it's very important to get all these main ideas uh, properly aligned by doing different examples. Okay, so there, here the very first uh, idea that we talk about is how the change in flux, this change in flux, when the wire move up, causes this induced current. But with the induced current, it also comes with the fact that the wire will now experience a magnetic force. And because of that magnetic force pulling the wire down to oppose the change. So whenever you want to change flux or three things will happen simultaneously according to lens. Number one, current is induced to oppose the change, so it tries to recreate the missing flux. Number two, in the process of recreating this missing flux, there will be a magnetic force because you allow current to flow inside a magnetic field. Current flowing inside a magnetic field, you will have magnetic force. Because now you have a force pulling the wire down, you will need an external force to maintain the same speed. Because if not, you will lose energy. You will lose energy. So we need this external force to convert energy or do work to create or to induce electrical energy. All right. So hopefully that is clear. Take some time, get the ideas straight first because they all exist together and we cannot straight away just tell you, oh, this is only this or this is only that. Being able to analyze a magnetic field or understand the changes that is happening will be the key to your success in this topic. All right. So if you have any questions, comment down below or drop me a message. I will see you in the next video. Like, subscribe, do the thing. Bye-bye now.